Hi there, I'm Tesla and welcome to the beginner's guide tutorial for setting up player input in the Unreal Engine 4. In part 1, we're going to start by adding the ability to move around and to look around from a first person perspective. In part 2, we're going to take what we've learnt here and then apply that to a first, sorry, a third person template and a side scroller template. Okay, so to begin with, I'm using a blank project. So we need to create a new game mode. So we'll come up to blueprints and select game mode create. I'm going to name this mode 1. Choose OK. And we need to create a character for our game mode. So we'll close this, come into blueprints, right click, and choose blueprint. And we have some options here. I'm going to choose character. A character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. So we'll choose that. I'm going to name this player. So we need to assign this player to the game mode. So we'll open up the game mode, and on the defaults tab, we have default pawn class, and we can assign our player through this. And there we go, and if we close this and jump into our game, this is our player. Now we can't move around or look around, so we need to add that ability. So to do that, we need to come to the input settings of our project. So we'll come up to edit, project settings, input, and we have action mappings and axis mappings. So we want to be able to move forwards and backwards and left and right and to look around. So let's add a new axis map. We'll drop that down and we'll name this move forward. So we'll drop this down again and we can now choose that key. I'm going to choose W. And we can add, we need one for moving backwards so we'll add again and we need to choose S for moving backwards and we need to change the scale to minus one because it's going backwards so we need to move left and right we'll create another axis map and let's name this move right we'll drop this down and choose D and we'll add another axis map to the group and choose A but we need to change the scale again to minus one. And now we need the mouse input, so we'll add another axis map, change this to turn, we'll drop this down and select mouse X. So that's looking left and right with the mouse. Now we need to look up and down, so we'll add again and we'll change this to look up. Drop it down and choose mouse Y. And we also want the, to add the ability for our character to jump. So we'll, we can do that by action, just selecting action mapping. So we'll create a new action map, drop this down, and name this jump. Drop this down again, and choose spacebar. Where's that? Just there. Okay, so that's all we need to do here. We can close this, and now we need to set up those controls. And we can do that in the graph of our player. So we'll open this up, come to the graph, we will begin by right clicking and calling our mappings. So we'll come to input, axis events, and here's the maps we just created. So let's use move forwards. We'll right click again and let's type in get control rotation. We'll drag this out and type in get forward vector just here. And we'll drag this out again and type in movement. And we have add movement input. Okay, so we have a scale value here, but as you remember in the mappings, we have our own scale values. So we'll connect these guys together and we can connect this here. So now if I jump in the game, we can now move forwards and backwards, just like this. But we can't move left and right yet, so let's add that in. Open it up again and we will drag this one out and type in get right vector drag this out and type in movement again add movement input we'll right click here select input axis events because we need to call our move right map so we'll select that drag that to there and drag that to there Okay, so if we jump in now, we can move left and right, and forwards and backwards. And now we want to look around, so let's come back into our graph, 
And just to keep things neat, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click and choose create comment from selection. I'm going to name this player input. Okay. So adding the mouse input is really easy. We'll right click, come to input, axis events, turn. We'll drag this out and we'll type in your. So we have add controller your input. So if we jump in, oh, we need to select connect these axis values, sorry, just like the scale values. So we'll jump in, and now we can look left and right. Okay, so we want to look up and down as well, so we'll right click, input, axis events, look up. We'll drag this out and type in pitch. And we have add controller pitch input. And connect these guys together. Don't forget about that one. Select these guys. Right click. Create comment. Let's just call that mouse input. Just to keep it neat. Okay, so now if we jump in, we can look up and down and move around. However, my mouse is inverted. So how can we change that? We can come back to the input settings drop down the axis mappings, find look up, and change the scale to minus one. And it's not inverted for me anymore. So let's just quickly add the ability for our character to jump. We'll right click, input, action events, and you can see we have our jump mapping here. So we choose that, drag out pressed, because we just want to press spacebar and then a jump. We'll type in jump, and it's as simple as that. And you can define the jump height by coming into the defaults, scroll down till you get to character movement, and we have jump Z velocity. So let's turn that a bit higher, and we can jump quite high now. Okay, so in part two, we're going to change it to a third person perspective and then a side scroller perspective. And we'll take out some action mappings so we can't um, move uh, up and down, we only want to move left and right. So I'll see you in part two.